Hey, Mike here with Reprint. In today's video, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how we change the print head on a, a Mamaki CJV150. This is a single head model. This would be the same for the JV150. Uh, this machine just came out of Chicago. Uh, guy said it just needed a print head, uh, but he didn't tell me how he had made a mess inside of here. He's already been in here trying to save a print head, which I get it. They're expensive. You want to try to salvage them any way you can, but uh, you can see he's made a mess. You can see all the ink on them connectors nastiness uh, i hate seeing machines like this this is scary when you get into a situation where someone's been messing around inside here uh lots of bad things can happen that ink on them cables could have you know surged to the print head and it could potentially burn up our brand new print head so we got to make sure we're careful uh, if you notice in a lot of these videos that i make uh, i tell you what not to do uh, more than i do what to do because i've learned a lot and you can really make a mess if you're not careful so uh try to follow these instructions the best you can and keep a nice clean ink free environment uh, the ink has been drained from this machine so uh, if i had ink there it would be a little bit more scarier because you could potentially ruin that two thousand dollar print head uh, in this scenario uh, sometimes i use uh, typical roland uh, print heads the dx7 because they are uh, substantially cheaper than the uh, mamaki print head but uh fortunately i have a nice little uh connection that i've been buying some some print heads for that i can get at the same price i've got the uh OEM Mamaki right here, brand spanking new, and they come with brand new head cables, so that is great. Uh, when you order the actual Mamaki head, you're going to get the head cables, you're going to get the uh, uh, memory board, and you can see right there, it says uh, numbers right there, one, two, three, five, four, seven, six, eight, which is very important because this guy pulled the dampers out. This is exactly how we opened up the machine. He has no dampers in there, and that's going to make it as hard, make it hard for us to you know figure out which line is which but ironically mamaki has numbered each and every one of these cables so uh it'll be easy to figure it figure it out uh if it was a rolling machine then we might have to get out the service manual and figure out which color goes where uh so that's what we're going to do now i'm going to clean up this area a little bit better and there's two screws which are kind of hard to see let's see uh we got two allen wrench screws there's one right there Right there, you see it? Then we've got another one on this side. Let's see, it's kind of hard to get light. Uh, it's in the back right there. So that's what we're gonna use to get this print head, print head out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and we'll be right back to you. All right, so I got the print head pulled out here and uh, I always like to make sure that the print head is indeed bad before I uh, write it off as bad. And uh, a lot of people that you know are going to replace a $2,000 print head uh, you want to make sure that that is your root cause. So uh, right here, I just hooked up a syringe to uh, one of the uh, little nipples here, and you'll see what happens whenever I inject some fluid. There you go. You can see it coming out of another channel. So that tells me right there, the seals in the middle of the print head are bad. So if you're someone that's looking for some type of answers and to know for sure your print head's bad, pull it out of the machine uh, before you replace the other one. There you go. Now back to the video of replacing the print head. All right, so we went ahead and uh, replaced or pulled the print head out. Uh, I could see that they tried replacing the cap top, thought that would change their uh, outcome and maybe be the solution. Unfortunately, it was not. Uh, so what I'm gonna do real quick is do a wipe down of this area, see if I can clean up this inky mess that was made. Uh, make it like I would want it if it was my printer. So that's what we're gonna do right now before we throw the new print head in the machine. I've checked the, uh, the uh, choke valves. Uh, I did that actually before we started replacing the print head. I wanted to see what damage was done in that area. It was apparent that this guy's been messing around, uh, which I see often, you know, probably uh, two thirds of the machines that we purchased, someone has tried to salvage the print head, which I get it, I've been there. So uh, we're gonna clean this area up and then we're gonna uh, replace the print head. All right, so right now I'm gonna prep uh, this print head to uh, install on the printer. Uh, might as well, if you're in, in there already, might as well replace the uh, cap top and the dampers. So uh, right now I wanted to show you what I do uh, before I install the dampers is uh, take a little cleaning solution. Uh, I got on a little foam swab and I want to uh, moisten them little O-rings there on both the top and the bottom. I'll just uh, try to do it with one hand, but a little cleaning solution, make sure that it gets a nice seal. This uh, cleaning solution is gonna allow it to bond with the plastic of the manifold to ensure no air uh, gets in the system. So 
first thing I'm going to do is that, and then we'll jump into installing the print head. All right, so I popped in the dampers. Uh, I had them in the correct orientation, and uh, I made sure that these little clips, they have little clips on the side here. I double checked that these are all securely fastened because uh, this can cause air if they're not in the right uh, locked position. So we did that first, and now we're ready to throw this baby in the machine. All right, so one of the precautions uh, that I want to make clear is uh, these flat cables, making sure that you install them nice and straight. This is vital that you know you double check these over and over again. Uh, make sure that you have them in right. Uh, if they're crooked, then you could potentially blow the slider board or the print head. So be very careful. Make sure that they are ink free. No ink whatsoever is on them cables. If there is, then you need to make sure you clean them. Allow time to uh, the machine to dry out before trying to power it on because that's a big mistake I see lots of people make. Uh, so we have the printed in there. We did a little bit of cleaning uh, the best that we could. Uh, we again moistened the uh, top o-rings and we made sure that all these connectors these butt connectors uh, here and they do uh, sell replacements if needed they do have uh, i ordered these from digiprint and uh unfortunately we didn't need them uh, those were all perfect so them joint connectors right there we got all the numbers uh, orchestrated correctly uh, we can see number one is in the one position which it relates to on the board right there one two three five four seven and six eight so we've got those in there so now we're ready to try to ink up the machine and pray for me pray for me i hate machines that people have worked on because it could run this print head i'm you know trying to uh be nice about it but it, you can do a lot of damage to the print head uh if someone has caused some kind of electrical short in the machine from not being careful so this is scary uh typically you know i'll try to you know when I buy a machine like this, I'll just sell it as is when people uh, mess with it. But we're going to go ahead and try it out and hope that we don't destroy a $2,000 print head. All right, so now we've got it doing its initial fill. Uh, in this instance, we had to change it from ink type uh, ES3 to uh, uh, SS21. We had SS21 cartridges and... We didn't have any ES3, so we had to switch it over, which I'm going to do another video on how to change over the ink type. I right, see some movement. Everything seems to be flowing well. not going to lie, I'm ready to see a test print because of the inky mess I saw in here. I'm kind of scared that the slider board or a main board or another component could be screwed up and hopefully it doesn't screw up my print head. You can really create damage inside these printers uh, if you're not careful. One of my biggest problems is uh, I buy this stuff and someone else picks it up and I just buy it sight unseen and don't get to get in there and inspect. I mean, I paid too much for this machine. If I would have been there in person, uh, uh, I probably would have talked them down less, but it's hard to when you promise somebody and say, hey, I'll come get lunch to ask more questions. So, you know, had he messed with it previously, I sometimes forget to ask that. If I was a novice, if I didn't have so many parts and went to purchase the machine, the first thing I would do is take the head cover off and inspect this if you see it. And most people should just run away. Nope, not buying it. But if all goes well, then I'll make some money. Everything seems to be flowing. See the black there? We got the magenta. Yeller. There we got some cyan. Uh, we've got a couple colors still not. Nope. There we go. And that yellow starting to come. Uh, I see some movement on 
and then magenta number two. Come on, baby. That's what I'd like to see. Let's see, there's one cyan line back there that doesn't have any movement yet. It might be something I have to troubleshoot. Actually, yeah, we got cyan. That cyan's moving. All right, we got cyan number one. This is where the fun and the troubleshooting begins. Uh, if those lines don't fill during a ink fill. We got two lines that have not filled up. We may have some ink somewhere. We may have an ink line that's messed up, but we will see to be continued. <laughs> 